All right, so how do you use subaligner to align two sets of subwoofers? So this is the first video I'm making in this series about questions about subliner. So if you have any questions about subliner, please put them in the comments for this video. Uh, so this is one of the more complex questions, but why not start with this one? Um, I have gotten several versions of this question and those there are always questions about like how do I use subaligner with my application? Um, so let's take a look at Sean's question. Do you plan to allow for alignment between two subpoints? I have a flown center cluster and two floor clusters under the left and right main. Enjoying your tips immensely. Thanks, Sean. So the PA is eight leopards per side. Then there are some 900 LFC and Sean sent me a photo. So it's not a great photo, but at least we can see that there's an audience here. And then up here, there's a sound system with some subs and some mains. And then somewhere down here, supposedly there's some more subs. So I have drawn up uh, what this design might look like. Here are those subs in the center, left and right mains, and then some subs on the ground. How do we think about this? Well, it's not really so much what subliner does or how subliner handles this, it's where we choose the alignment position. And that is the answer to a lot of these questions because in a lot of ways, subliner is very simple. It's pretty dumb. It uses the very simple um, yet foolproof relative absolute method taught by Merlin Van Veen and used by many manufacturers and recommended in their um, hardware manuals and their preset guides and things like that. Subliner uses the same thing. All it needs is distance measurements, but you have to decide where to measure from and where to measure to. So that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So let's take the very first step, which I think is actually pretty easy, which is how do we get all of these guys to play well together? Okay. And to answer that question, we can take a look at this guide that I wrote and published last year called the complete guide to measurement microphone placement for subwoofer alignment. If we scroll down and we look at the table of contents here, we see that there's one called center flown sub horizontal asymmetry. And there we go. It looks very similar to our design here, right? With subs in the middle. And one of the methods that I recommend is called the zero offset line. That's basically just an isosceles triangle. It's really easy. So if we take a top view here and then we draw some lines, we can see that I have made an isosceles triangle here with the position of this microphone. And that means that everywhere down the center line here that this guy and this guy will be arriving in time and at the same amplitude. And I've already done this so I can prove this to you real quick by showing you what it looks like if I just turn on this main and this front sub. Okay, here's a prediction at 63 hertz and it shouldn't surprise you to see this shape, right? So we've got this, you know, big bubble of alignment going right down the middle. So how did I do that with subaligner? So let's go here and let's go to a front view, I think. Yeah, let's go to a front view. And I have drawn some little lines here to make this easier on myself because I often want to point right at the middle of the ray, not one of the speakers in particular, and not one piece of hardware on the side, but the actual center. So I get my ruler and I measure from my microphone to my main, oops, okay, 22.65 and to the sub, 22.22. Subliner, 22.65. And I've got Meyer Sound Leopard native processing preset. And there's 16 of them in the room. And then Meyer Sound 900 LFC, six of them. I'm not counting the other two on the ground yet. And then 22.22 meters. Now, Subaligner is going to give us a suggestion here for delay and polarity. 
but um, it's going to give me this result, which has uh, uh, quite a big area of overlap here. So if I want a little bit less overlap, I might take a look at one of the filter suggestions here. So I ended up using one of these filter suggestions and I implemented that. That also has the solution here for uh, the filter settings and then also delay and polarity. So I just went and I put those in here into the processor. I know there's a lot of information here, but I'll just point out a couple things. I put in the filter settings uh, and then the delay over here. I've got my gradient sub uh, array up in the air there, subs front and subs rear. And now I can show you what that looks like on the prediction. So we'll go to a top view. And then uh, we already looked at these, these front and side subs together, but what if we look at all subs and all mains? Not the subs on the ground yet, just the flown subs. Okay, this is the solution that we get. Actually, it looks kind of cool. At least at uh, 63 hertz. So how do we move forward now integrating these little subs on the ground? Now, I don't love this design, but without actually getting into, you know, criticizing the design and talking about that because the person who designed it is not here to, to defend the design or explain to me why they did it the way they did it. But it seems to me that when you have subs on the ground like that, that they are sort of like little fill speakers. And so the person designing it may have thought, I'll use this guy for most of the audience and then I'll have some little guys here just for uh, you know a few people up in this area. So I say, okay, for me to maximize the situation, for me to integrate those into the rest of the system, what I should probably do is find where those subs on the ground are the same level as my mains up here in the air. And when I say mains now, I'm referring to this entire system that we just put together. So we might call that our flown system, okay? One way to figure that out here in our modeling software might be to set our measurement units here to SPL, to absolute units, instead of attenuation. So I'll just say, okay, and now I can grab a picture. So I'm just gonna take a screenshot here. Now let's look at one of the subs on the ground. So here we go. Now we can compare apples to apples and I can put this on top and we've got you know this red color over here from the previous prediction. We've got this red color from this prediction. And now when they go on top of each other, hopefully we'll be able to see you know where does red end up on top of red. And so now we see in this section here, this is the hottest section. So it's really the overlap between um, the levels from our ground system and our flown system. So now maybe it makes more sense to you why I put the microphone here. Because where we have equal levels, we also need things to have equal time to be phase aligned. So now we've made a decision about our alignment point, and now we can just run subaligner again. Um, something to keep in mind here though, at first it may be tempting to think, okay, I'll align main to sub at this position because you know this is the closest element. But in reality, we've got sub energy coming from here, from here, from all over the place. We can't turn it off. Even though this is a gradient array and you know its forward energy is going out here, you know, we're still really close here. So there's plenty of sub energy coming over here. And even from this other system, this system isn't so wide that it's over here and we're in isolation. So nowhere really in this audience are we in isolation as far as the low end is concerned. So now that I've said that, hopefully it makes more sense when I tell you that I think we should think about this as our flown system. And therefore when we measure our distances and put them into subaligner. We should measure up to the center of this entire system, kind of like the center of our array, because this is an uncoupled array now, and then measure down to our sub. So let's try that. So we would measure to up here, 8.65, 2.21. 8 and I don't care about the elements anymore. 
2.21. And this says 17.85 milliseconds of delay. So you can see why I've got, you know, 18 milliseconds up here already. And now we can take a look at that result. Uh, and I can go ahead and put these in if we want to be specific. Okay. Well, let's just look at let's just look at the flown system first and let's switch to attenuation. Okay, so nice big red area there. And now let's look at the addition of those subs on the ground. Okay. Changes quite a bit. I mean, same same overall shape, same overall shape, but it changes because even though those subs on the ground are only one and the subs in the air are, you know, six, and then we have a bunch of leopard on each side, the subs on the ground are much closer to this, you know, front couple of rows of the audience. So now we have this, you know, red section up here. So again, no criticism about this design, just trying to figure out how to integrate these little guys on the ground that seem to me to be as fill. So to recap, the first thing I did is I just want to make sure that this flown system, which covers the majority of the audience, is aligned first. So I used um, this procedure here that I'm calling the zero offset line, you know, where, where these guys match in distance, isosceles triangle. And then I found the point for the next alignment position to fold in those little subs on the ground. I found where we had matching levels from our flown system and our ground system and then use that as our alignment position from where we take our laser distance measure measurements. So I want to know what you think. Uh, does this bring up any questions for you? Uh, have you done this in the field before? Do you have any suggestions for me? Maybe you saw something I did wrong or, or some way that this could be done even better. I hope you let me know and I'll see you in the next video.